Let the crazy talk begin. And I have Bradshaw in the studio with me, but lest you think that that refers to him, no, he is here to help me dissect and analyze the crazy talk coming from the Republican presidential wannabes and folks like Chuck Grassley, who isn't even running for president, but if he he uh, talks any, if he, say, if he says anything more silly than what he said the other day, they may want to nominate him. Anyway, uh, you know, I'm... I'm, you know, I'm pretty critical of the Democratic Party these days, too. But gosh, uh, what transpired at the family leader the other night should do wonders for helping boost the ranks of the uh, Democratic Party. Anyway, uh, Bradshaw, welcome to the show. Our- the camera over here, but you're way over there. So I'm going to have to do like a Michelle Bachman and look like just off of the camera. Well, it doesn't matter because you're Hello. wearing that silly cuffs hat welcome. and it's shading your eyes. Nobody can see your eyes what? anyhow. I have very pretty eyes. Well, well, then why do you shave them under a 1908 Cubs hat? Because, I don't know, I like this hat. And I'm having a bad hair life. <laughs> I'm having a no hair life, and I love it, actually. <laughs> yeah, see, I've got too much. It just It's like weeds. It just grows. So, huh. Well, you ought to, you're probably dumping too many, uh, too many a, lawn chemicals in there. Got a cowlick there. in there. And just <laughs> bad hair life. Yeah, my, my problem is I got this glare thing going on. You get, you get too little hair. You have like the seven head. Ooh. Oof, you start blinding, so like, wow, look at my audience suddenly. That's like a 10 head, actually. Shielding their eyes in fear. Yes, okay. Just put some pancake makeup on that. Pancake makeup. Yeah, okay. do like the Picard thing. All right, so you, I'm sure you were at the family leader event the other day. Oh, yeah. A great time. Were you there? Well, I mean, there were a bunch of press there. I mean, no. I could have went. I opted not no, to. I, I, I'm actually, I'm not sure they would have They would have given me press credentials. They might not have. Bob Vanderplatz is a lot of things. Um, it's not stupid. Uh, remember, you can only say certain words on this program, so be uh, careful. No, he understands. It's August in a non-election year. It is, you know, in the, the ebb and flow of politics. This is as dead as it gets. So if you're going to get some airtime, going to get some attention at all, and more importantly, some fundraising, which is, <laughs> right. I mean, let's be honest, that's Bob Vanderplatt's job. Yeah. He is a fundraiser. Right. That is why he is being paid, you know, ungodly sums. And I use that term, I guess, in his case, literally. Uh, about, about 120 grand a year? About 125 grand a year. Mm. Um, and his contract, is it up this year or next? I don't know, but I've, I, I he signed. He originally signed, yeah, 100, uh, I think it was 125 grand for, uh, for three years um, to be the, the chief fundraiser for the family leader. Because their government's bigot got cut off. You remember all that fun? Their government's bigot? Or did you say well, government spigot? Spigot. Oh, okay. I thought that was a first. Right, so almost there. all of their funding came from the federal government. This came right. out to help uh, promote in a, marriage. In a story. To promote marriage for straight people. Well, this came out in a story the day after Chuck Harley was at a tax day tea party. Remember those? Oh, I do remember those. Those were yes. good times, uh, right? Those were the great times. You know, decrying government spending. Mm-hmm. And the very next day, it turns out almost all of their uh, their income comes from um, the federal government. So without that, they had to turn to well, grifters. And is there a better one in the state than uh, Bob Vanderplatz? Doesn't Vanderplatz mean grifter in Dutch? I'm sure. Wooden shoe, grifter, <laughs> tulip. Oh, my God, we're flooding. I don't know exactly. Um, don't speak the language. But so if, if you're looking for a time, you know, to, to get some attention, this would be it. There's nothing else going on. It's an open, you know, playing field. So, you know, attract the the crazies, um, including Donald Trump. Yeah, I mean, who again? You know, when maybe I when the I the craziest of them all. I mean, no, he's the, probably the smartest. He has no intention know. of running for president. But Everyone just, knows he has no intention for running for president. But he knows if he shows up, the Des Moines Register is going to send their top political reporter to follow him around and live and die by his his every utterance. And yeah. they did. They're suckers. They fall for it again and again. I mean, how many? This is the third time now, third or fourth. And even the the Register, you know, was was tweeting, you know. Oh, you know, he's an influential, you know, Republican. So we'll, if he's an influential Republican, they got more problems than even I think they have. 
<laughs> and two, you know, if you're to the Des Moines Register and you have to, you know, publicly make an excuse, you know, an alibi for doing it, you know it's wrong. Yeah. And I, I would love to see one member of the, the, you know, reporting staff, one member of the editorial board, um, one person in a position of power at the Des Moines Register tell me they believe that there is a chance in Hades that Donald Trump would actually run for president. Right. Because if there is even one in that building who thinks it's a realistic, even an outside chance, uh, well, they're the only, deluded. The only reason they pay any attention to him all is because Link of his, well, his money. He's got, he's got, you know, you, you become, you become a viable candidate for public office in this country anymore uh, by having money. Not, not, not for, look at Ross Perot, no experience, uh, flakier than a $3 bill. And uh, and he and he gets all sorts of attention as a candidate for president because of his money. You know, you have other other candidates I, I, I who actually have some, was, make some sense. They get no coverage. You go back to to ninety two. I mean, I think there was some oxygen in the room for a non Democrat Republican right. But why candidate. why why a, why a guy who's clearly a I mean, but you know, Ross Perot did not present very well on the stump. But that did not stop him from getting all sorts of coverage. No, but I think there were plenty of candidates who made a lot more sense on the stump than he did. What they didn't have was access. Money. Well, access, money, call it. It's money. Let's, let's not euphemize it. Well, <laughs> money, money buys you access, but there are other ways. Well, I mean, Donald Trump isn't spending a whole lot of money. No. In fact, I doubt he's spending any money. This is a money generating venture uh, for Trump. He has access, he has celebrity. Uh, I think that's why a lot of people were looking for Ashley Judd to run against Mitch McConnell in mm. uh, Kentucky, that celebrity, that that access. So Donald Trump, um, you know, hems and haws, but in the day, you know, his main message is, I'm Donald Trump, buy my ties, buy my shirt, watch The Celebrity Apprentice. And I mean, that is the president. true political message uh, of Donald Trump. And if you're going to give him uh, a stump to to say that, you know, again, you either A, know that he's doing that, or B, are too stupid to understand yeah. what Donald Trump actually is. And I don't think there's a C there. Yeah. Well, I mean, he, he either he is very disingenuous or he is not very intelligent. When you come out and, and, and not only buy, but pander the birther, the birther line, when, when you, I mean, does he, do you think he really believes that Obama is not a U.S. citizen? Or I don't is, think he cares. Okay, so he doesn't, he mind, knows he doesn't that mind lying he, to people about he that. He knows that someone is going to put a, it's, it's a different ball game. He knows that if he says these things, someone is going to put a camera in his face, put a microphone in front of him, and it's going to put but, his face and his name on the TV. No, but That's I thought, no, but I thought period, you said, end of I, sentence. I, I thought you said he doesn't need to do, he doesn't need to say crazy things because he's already going to get the cameras just by virtue of being this big, powerful mogul. Um, so why go, why, why bother to say the crazy stuff like the, like subscribing to the birther myth and, and what, what else does he say? Cause He's, otherwise it's a dog know, bites man story. If Donald Trump just gets, stands up and gives a speech would, on fiscal conservatism. Wouldn't that be a story for, for, for Trump actually to give a speech where he's talking point, about a substantive issue? I mean, I mean, yeah, at this point, the same way, you know, when you, when you see the guy, you know, yelling at a fire hydrant on the street. Um, oh, people, yeah, and getting in an argument with it. Oh, you, um, you don't do that too? I mean, not so I much. do that all the time. I mean, um, I, again, I, I not a arguments. story. If if that guy all of a sudden starts, you know, doing a, a Royal Shakespeare Company, you know, level Hamlet on the street corner, that might actually make some news. Yeah. Uh, Donald Trump, one, doesn't have it in him, and two, doesn't care to have it in him because he doesn't need to. All he needs for you to do is make sure that... No. When Channel 8 or Channel 13 or the Des Moines Register put Donald Trump in a headline, you're going to click, yeah. you're going to pay attention, you're going to tune in, and you're going to watch Celebrity Apprentice until it gets canceled. I, I can see clearly that I have to revise my strategy for arguing with fire hydrants. Uh, pretending it's R2-D2 doesn't cut it, does it? No, no, no. All right, that's too simple. All right. <laughs> no, but look, Trump's a, Trump's a joke, and it's it's link bait these days. I mean... But, 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 Brand, I, I, you know, institutions like the Des Moines Register are in deep trouble. Yeah. And if they can't generate link bait, if they can't... What do you mean by link bait? Uh, get a drudge link, uh, OneDrive, uh, web traffic, show those great statistics, those number of likes on Facebook. That's what they're judged on uh, these days. This is where sites like Politico and, and BuzzFeed uh, come 
from. Mm. You know, to, this is one thing that the, the right is very good at that um, we on the, the left lack is that kind of, well, one, uh, drudge. Um, like him, hate him, um, smash eggs on him for erotic pleasures. You can Google that one yourself. I'm not going to get into that. I would not that. waste eggs um, in, that, in that venture. It's, hey, look, whatever you're into, as long as it's safe, sane, and consensual. Maybe if they're AJ DeCoster eggs, but, it's pretty uh, much worthless anyhow. But Drudge is a, a huge driver of web traffic. And because of that, um, normally, I don't know, reasonable journalistic institutions will go out of their way to try to throw something up inflammatory as drudge bait. And getting on drudge can drive, you know, seven-figure hits, hundreds of thousands of hits uh, to your webpage, and you get to keep your job for another month. That's unfortunately how our media works these days. So this is where the the inflammatory rhetoric, the... Uh, well, outright buying of, of articles and institutions by folks like the, the Koch brothers comes from. Yeah. And it works. It is a very effective noise machine. doesn't generate a whole lot other than noise. Um, you know, for all the talk of the Koch brothers' millions, they haven't been very effective. For all the, you know, NRA well, lobbying really, money. The, the Koch brothers' money has not been effective? Look at the debate on climate change. Look at how horrible that has shifted from people understanding that science actually matters to now... Uh, being more inclined to deny the reality of human caused climate change. I mean, that's, but I mean, long that's term, a factor of Koch brother money. Uh, mostly oil company money. Oil yeah, companies oil funding. Money. I mean, it, it's hard to find a legitimate scientist who denies, you know, global climate change that isn't on some sort of right. And and yet they know, still one, are two, three degree um, well, yeah, away they, payroll they, well, from they, they, Exxon. They still or win BP. debates. They still win the. They still win the public support for opposing it. Well, because they have the easy argument. Hey, yeah. people, do you like driving SUVs? Do you enjoy suburban sprawl? In the case of America, yes. Do you like wasting energy? Generally, yes. Do you like 20-minute showers? Yes. Not exactly it's like, the polling it's question. Like but, when the but, yeah. Well, it's like when the homophobes, you know, uh, got people to eat Chick-fil-A as a giant... like. Really? That's the heavy lifting you did? You got Americans to eat fast food? Man, that is a that is a tough, you know, hill to climb there. Um, they have the easy argument. We have the harder one. Hey folks, uh, Bradshaw's with me today, and I'm unfortunately he's, I'm gonna be stuck with this guy for the rest of the uh, the full hour. So if you want to call and help me uh, defend uh, common sense against his rants, uh, it's 515-244-0077 or toll free. 855-244-0077. I want to thank the Iowa chapter of the Sierra Club and also Iowa Physicians for Social Responsibility for sponsoring the Fallon Forum. We're going to um, have Matt Sinovic with Progress Iowa join us as well here shortly to talk about the uh, American Legislative Exchange Council. And, uh, well, they're losing some of their corporate... Um, Benefactors, and we'll talk about that uh, that with Matt. Um, I also want to thank uh, Gateway Marketing Cafe for sponsoring this segment of our program, and remind folks to support the businesses that make the show possible. Check out Gateway Market for a great line of groceries, a lot of it from local farms and local producers, but also you got breakfast, lunch, and supper happening at Gateway Market and a catering service as well. I want to thank Sergeant's Garage at Sixth and College. My uh, if and when I drive. If and when my car breaks down, I take it to sergeants. They're great. Uh, always do a, real, a very bang-up job and uh, do it timely as well and for a reasonable price. I also want to thank uh, Hawk Restaurant at East 5th and Walnut, where, again, you get a fantastic lunch, supper, and uh, Sunday brunch. And 90% of the food at Hawk comes from Iowa Farms. We'll be back in just a couple minutes. Again, Bradshaw with me today and Matt Sinovic joining us shortly. <laughs> From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Drug and alcohol addiction slowly steals a person's identity, tearing away pieces of their life little by little until one day it seems like the hope of a happy future is gone and there's no chance of getting it back. Here at St. Gregory Retreat Centers, we can assure you that there is hope. Our unique approach to recovery begins with the understanding that the dysfunction and damage caused by addiction can be overcome not just dealt with. Don't let another day go by. Call St. Gregory today.
Well, good morning. This is the 7th of June in the Lord's year 2010, and this is day uno, one of webcast1live.com. We will begin with Max World Live with my special guest, Tom Coates, in just a minute. There's Tom. Howdy. And uh, we will be live for the very first time on webcast one. and say, gosh, remember that old day in history? Wonder where Walter Cronkite was. He must have been around hanging there too. But actually, it's the beginning of Webcast One Live. And thank you for listening. Thanks, Rob Spearman and everybody who's put together this project together. And uh, we're ready to go live now. So thanks for listening to MaxWorldLive.com. I can't tell you that it's going real well from time to time, but it is going. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. That is Mr. Baver's Neighbors, Ode to Jones. We're back to our conversation here today on the Fallon Forum. I want to thank the Immigrant Entrepreneur Summit for sponsoring this segment of our program. And uh, we're going to talk with Matt Sinovec shortly with uh, Progress Iowa. But uh, Bradshaw's with me today, and we've been talking about the uh, the family leader. Oh, the uh, the first salvo of the Republican uh, presidential caucus here in Iowa. Oh, please. It's the, the first uh, segment of the Republican book tour. If anyone thinks, I mean, short of Hillary and Biden both deciding not to run in 2016, it's going to be another Republican clown car. Well, uh, yeah, maybe. And Senator Grassley seems to be doing his part to help. Uh, you know, the guy's not even running for president, but maybe, maybe, uh, maybe he will qualify as, uh, as extreme enough I mean, this is what this is what he said at the uh, family leader event. Uh, followers of Christ, I guess that means Republicans, need to take on the progressive movement. I guess that means Democrats. And then he goes on to say, I'm here to tell you to get involved. Um, one day he goes on to talk about one nation under God. Uh, then he says, but progressives have the wrong idea. Early progressives spoke far more openly about their disdain of the Constitution than you hear from most people who use that label today. I, I, I don't even know where this guy's coming from anymore. He gets more and more bizarre all the time. If he keeps moving in that direction, uh, he could be a great candidate for president on the Republican you know, ticket. For, for years, Chuck Grassley really held the facade of just the aw shucks, you know, Iowa farm boy, made good, 99 counties, I'm your buddy, and... Something about it's like something happened in January 20th of 2009 or so, yeah, uh, where that facade uh, I, I, dropped. Yeah, I mean, I, Chuck Grassley's always agree. been this he guy, he used to be more independent. I mean, uh, there were a lot no, of, I, don't, I don't think he was. I think he just did a better mm, job. No, I think he was I of hiding. Now, part of it is just pandering again yeah. to what's left this, this rump of uh, the base of the Republican Party. But I mean, Chuck Grassley's always been this way, he was a member of. And is a member of the family. Are you familiar with uh, these guys out of uh, yeah, Washington, sure, D.C.? Yeah, of course, yeah. You know, the, 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 the genesis yeah. of the Uganda Kill the Gays Bill. Right. Ouch. Uh, who believe, you know, that uh, no matter what sex scandal you get caught up in, uh, it is your divine right to lead. I mean, that's always been Chuck Grassley. He just let the facade drop. Let's uh, take a phone call again. If you want to join the conversation, folks, 244 244- Double O double seven. Let's go to uh, Richard. Uh, Richard Maynard, welcome to the show. Hi, Ed. How are you doing? Good. What's on your mind? Well, you just touched on it. I was listening to you guys earlier about uh, Trump, about Donald Trump, and I just to add to that, I, you know, you, I, I, the only thing I can figure out about that guy, because everything you said made sense if you really wanted to appeal to 
to uh, the least mainstream Republicans, he wouldn't be talking this way. But the guy just craves attention. He's addicted to attention. I think that's basically the long and short of it. It does seem but, to be, yes. Yes, but Grassley's remark, I mean, this just gets me. Bradshaw just now read it, you know, but he said, you know, uh, progressives have the wrong early, early progressives. This is I love this early progressives spoke far more openly about their disdain of the Constitution. than you hear for most people use that label today. But, of course, he doesn't give any examples. And this is just such a, a typical example of how he's operated, how conservatives operate, particularly the far right conservatives. They just make these these grand statements and never back them up. You know, and by the time you go and fact check that, you know, like what right. was he talking about early in the concert? When yeah. pro- I don't even like the term progressives. I don't know why we gave up on liberal. I think that really describes us much better. And we should have been proud of that term instead of shying away. from. So it do, when, do you think Grassley has public. moved? From, I mean, I mean, there's some disagreement. Yes, he has. OK, so would you would agree that he used to be a little bit more reasonable, maybe a little independent. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure about independent, but yes, okay. he sure. I was away from Iowa for a long time, but yes, I, he wasn't. I don't recall him making these, you know, these Christian conservative right wing statements that are just nonsensical. You know, yeah. the death pan, uh, uh, panel. I, I don't. Was he part of the birther movement? I even forget. Everybody I was remember. jumping was on. I don't think he ever panel. jumped into the the, the birther. I mean, the death yeah. panels was was really his. But my main point on this and on calling in today was just about these conservatives who constantly just make these statements and then never back them up. You know what? The, when when I would like to ask Chuck Grassley, were liberals ever disdainful of the Constitution? I would say it's quite the opposite. Yeah. Well, um, I, I that that. It's certainly, certainly when it comes to um, marriage equality, uh, look who's been vindicated on that issue. And look also when it just, you know, when it comes to the sep- – it was, it was Thomas Jefferson who said there should be a wall of separation between the church and the state. Now, you don't get much clearer than that. Yeah. You know. Yeah. No, I mean the, the thing with the, the right wing is there's a lot of insulation uh, from, well, reality. When they when they say these things, and this is this is going to be a big problem for the Republican Party uh, going forward, uh, because you know this the the bubble they live in that's the term that's always uh, brought up keeps moving further and further away uh, from reality, and mm-hmm. that bubble is also generally off putting. Um, now Grassley's more, more, Grassley's statements aren't going to get a whole lot of play because. You know, there, there's there's bigger issues. Except if he starts room. tweeting them. <laughs> Whether it's Ted Cruz, though, or Donald Trump. It, I mean, you know, Chuck Grassley at this sort of meeting is a fourth or a fifth stringer. Um, yeah, maybe so he, he can say he these things, and they're not going to get a lot of attraction. They're not going to get a lot of attention. Um, and it, it just kind of reinforces this bubble that Republicans choose to live in as the world literally leaves them behind. Can I jump in? Sure. One, one, yeah, give it another shot there. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, I think it's also interesting after the last election, you know, the Republicans, if you listen to them, their analysis basically seems to be we weren't conservative enough. That's that's what Rick Santorum is saying, yeah. Oh, I know. That's what they're saying and they're getting. And I, you know, and of course they'll get that in the caucuses. I know there's always this worry about, you know, the caucuses is what makes the candidate, and we as, as Democrats or we as liberals should be concerned about that. I'm not so sure. They keep talking, and they keep getting these radical candidates, and I don't think they can win with that. I mean, that, you know, I don't mean to sit back and do nothing, but I'm not as concerned that a Rick Santorum or, or a Ted Cruz comes out of that. Republican Party, I think that will just continue to marginalize them. Yeah, well, I'm reminded uh, of the uh, of the recent uh, column by Kathleen Parker, a syndicated journalist. The mm-hmm. the uh, headline of which is "GOP is waging a principled suicide," and uh, I think there are a lot of folks who concur with with that analysis. Although I think she uh, she phrased it pretty. Uh, pretty enticingly. No, I, I, oh. I think the the root of it is you're always going to hear that argument until a uh, Ted Cruz or a, a Rick Santorum, someone they can't label as a rhino, you know, post mortem, gets absolutely mondaled. Yeah. Um, and and mm-hmm. what what's the argument at that point? I mean, the, the truth is, you go down the Republican, you know, list of demands, and every single one of them is unpopular with the American people. 
Unless right you live in the bubble, in which case we surround them. Remember those good old days. Yeah. I think if that happened, if Mondale, if 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 a Cruz or Santorum or uh, somebody got Mondale, as you said, I I don't think that would even wake them up. There would be yeah. something else. Well, they would try to rhino them post-mortem. Richard, thanks uh, so much for joining us. Uh, Richard Maynard, folks, also, hey, really appreciate your work with the Repertory Theater of Iowa. Well, keep coming. Yeah, well, you're one of the reasons we've become the cultural and culinary crossroads of the continent. So uh, thank you for your work there. Thank you, guys. I appreciate the time. Did you coin that phrase, Ed? I did, I'm afraid. Why, do you like it? Oh. You're thinking about it. In the words of Toby Ziegler, I now need an avalanche of Advil. <laughs> an avalanche of Advil. There needs to be another A word in there if you want to keep up with my ability with alliteration. Anyway, uh, Matt uh, Matt Sinovic is in the studio with us. Matt, welcome to the show. Thanks, Ed. Great I want to, to talk with you about uh, about uh, Alec, but uh, gosh, while we're uh, while we're uh, plowing away through uh, Republican presidential candidate wannabe statements, uh, any any thoughts yourself on this? Actually, yeah, I was at the. Family Leader Summit all day oh, on Saturday. You, do you need a hug? <laughs> Did you feel the touch of God? Yeah. Did uh-huh. you feel the touch of death? Did you I, feel I the felt- touch of Santorum? <laughs> <laughs> do you need a wet nap? I have no. I have no comment about any of these questions. No. Um, um, it was it was interesting to to be there in person. Uh, I went last year as well to the first summit, and so for you're a for, sick person. <laughs> you for, really have been- um, for Progress Iowa, we were there uh, to monitor and to live tweet and to make sure that all of these quotes hopefully see at least some light of day. I mean, it's yeah. true what, what you said earlier that um, that because like Chuck Grassley is, he really was like the fourth, fifth, sixth, probably most popular speaker at this event, hit some of his quotes don't really, you know, they don't really make it through to getting covered or getting noticed. So uh, we take it upon ourselves to go and, and watch and and make sure that all of the the crazy uh, hateful rhetoric so actually I, gets I, gets written down. I had some people uh, write back to me uh, in response to the email I put out this morning, um, you know, taking issue with my characterization of uh, some of what was said as crazy. Uh, uh, one guy, also named Ed, nice name, otherwise we disagree. Uh, you should take a bit of care when you, quote, report what went on at the Iowa Leader Forum. It aired on TV if you care to review. Sorry, I don't have a TV. Um, and he was on to uh, just you know defend some of the comments, but uh, you were there. Is, is characterizing this as crazy talk uh, out of line? I don't think so. Um, it when you have speaker after speaker comparing uh, homosexuality to uh, pedophilia, bestiality. Oh, really? Did, just, who said that? Um, it was one of the. I knew everyone there. That. I mean, everyone it, there. no one disagreed with it. I should say yeah. that. I mean, uh, at this at this conference. I mean. The, that's one that was an applause line during one of the wow. during one of the speeches. So these are statements that are not in I mean they're not even close to the mainstream of anything touching reality. I mean this is the bubble within the bubble. I mean this is <laughs> um, so I, I don't think you can I don't think you can go far enough to characterize these as extreme or uh, crazy or, you know, uh, any label that you want. I mean, because it truly, having sat through every single speech of the day on Saturday uh, at this summit, it is it is as far removed from reality as you could possibly imagine. Wow. that That's, I you know, I, I, I don't know whether to commend you or to commit you, but uh, at any rate... Uh, Thank you for being there. Absolutely. Um, I mean, was was Trump? I mean, I mean, one of my one of the detracting emails I received was saying, you know, tr- Trump was not unreasonable. Did he did he subscribe to the homosexuality is bestiality uh, rhetoric or something along those lines, or was he a little he, bit uh, off on that uh, talking point? He did not mention that specifically. He his speech was almost rambling and and not really coherent. Um, <laughs> and and so they sat in honestly the crowd sat in silence for most of most of his remarks until he added in a line about being um, anti-abortion, anti-gay, anti-gay marriage, and um, anti-amnesty. Uh, Isn't that so fascinating? So he just threw that he sort of threw that in and got a you know a huge round of applause. That's really um, what the family leader is about. Is it's the it's the abortion, gay marriage stuff that gets the base yeah. fired up, and maybe well, the anti-immigrants. Well, I take it as well. a. It's about wedge issues they can fundraise off of. And, you know, the fact that Bob Vanderplatz gets any attention or any traction in our political climate right now uh, 
I think, shows exactly how broken the system is. Well, Bradshaw has a, a, a surprise presidential prediction to add to the conversation, and we're going to talk about that later in the program, but I, we got to go. we got to switch gears a little bit here, folks, and go to Alec. And no, that's not Alec Baldwin or anybody with another, the first name of Alec. It's the American— P. Keaton. What? Alex P. Keaton. Oh, okay. I don't even know who that that's is. That's probably closer to what we're dealing with. All right. You don't I, know Alex P.— No. Oh, it's family ties. No. I, yeah. Don't have a TV. Anyway, the American <laughs> Legislative Exchange. Did you have one in the eighties? For a little bit, black and white, uh, screwdrivers for antenna. It I need cool. a screwdriver right now. <laughs> okay, and you need to get rid of that stupid Cubs hat. Okay, okay. What? They may win if climate change. Uh, if climate change progresses as we ex- as expect, one of the benefits will be the uh, the Chicago Cubs will actually win a World Series. And That's Western Iowa will freeze over. Possibly, yes. Okay. Hey, we're going to go to a short break, folks. I do want to thank the Immigrant Entrepreneur Summit for sponsoring this segment of our show. That event is coming up on November 9th. And if you've got a small business you'd like to start, you want to learn how to put together your business plan, how to work with the Affordable Care Act, new changes in the tax code, check it out. 35 bucks for a full day of great information from a lot of experts. That's at Drake University on November 9th, IESUSA.org. I also want to thank Tally's Restaurant Bar and Catering in Beaverdale, for being a supporter of this program. You can check out Tally's for, for uh, lunch and supper, but also for brunch on Sundays. Fantastic patio seating up on the rooftop and also another outdoor seating area on the sidewalk. Uh, not on the sidewalk, but like near the sidewalk. The sidewalk levels that I'm trying to say. Anyway, check them out, folks. I also want to thank S&P Piano. Anytime I have to move my piano, and hopefully it won't be for another long while, these guys do a fantastic job, so check them out, folks. Again, information about all my business supporters on the Fallon Forum website, Fallon Forum, uh, www, of course, .fallonforum.com. We'll be back in a minute. Matt Sinovic with Progress Iowa. Bradshaw with me. We're going to talk about Alec. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. I'm Brian Leach, owner and general manager of Service Legends. I brought a long couple of the uh, home comfort heroes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tammy Wells. I am Nick Wondershot. I'm administrative manager. I'm the senior technician. I'm service legend. It seems like every good thing, when you feel it to the bone that it's good, there's a lot of hard work put behind it. You just, I, I don't think that you can fake it and have it turn out good. You know, if we seem like, okay, that's just weird, it's just a furnace, why would you believe so deeply in a furnace? It's not just that, you know, we want to show the world that you can have good service. Yeah, I mean, it's got to be, it's your home. You know, it's, it's built into our daily trainings, it's built into our culture, um, that we're going to do whatever it takes to have each client say they love us, period. That's why we spend all the hours in the training that we do. And if we guarantee it's going to be a good experience for you, or else it's free, what type of work do you think we're going to do? <laughs> there is a guarantee. Temperature selection guarantee, fixed rider it's free guarantee, comfort guarantee, best value guarantee, all of these guarantees hold us accountable to ensuring that we exceed your expectations. And if for whatever reason we fail and we can't make it right, we guarantee all of those guarantees with 100% money back guarantee. I mean, if you don't think that your technician can fix it right, are you going to say that to a client? No. <laughs> you don't have to worry about having a technician come to your house. We drug test, background check all of our team members. We put safe people in your home. Each and every one of our service techs, 400 hours a year in training. You tell it the minute they walk in the door. They know what they're doing, they've done their homework, and they actually truly care about what you want. Because at the end of the day, you're the person that makes sure I have a job. They're going to be listening. They're going to want to know what your challenges are. Then they're going to come and give you options, and, and you get to choose. If I'm there to help and I make it easy and painless, I did my job right that day. Well, when it comes to your comfort, safety, and your family, you know, you don't necessarily go buy the most expensive, but you get the most bang for your buck. Oh, it's worth it because there's a lot of people that will find a way to get it to work right now and then leave and then come back, charge you again, and, and the cycle just repeats itself. So when I'm out there looking at the furnace, I want to find why it failed today. How can we change the part today with something that you're not going to have to worry about? Is it worth changing the part today? I mean, you can put a lot of money into a furnace. I can fix parts all day. There's good job security in that for me, but is it the right thing for you? I get a lot of the phone calls of after the technicians are there. They're just in awe. They're like, wow, you guys are great. I mean, I don't even know what to say. You guys are great. Everything you did is perfect. It's great. <laughs> Keep going, though. I like this. <laughs> just give us a try. I'm going to take all the risk. I've got the time to make this right. I've got the support to make it right. Just check us out. And if you don't see the value in what we do. I mean, fixed writer, it's free or 100% money back. Enough said.
From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Too much fun here on the Fallon Forum. That's Max Wellman, and we're back to our conversation. This segment of the show uh, sponsored by Fighting Burrito. Yep. Tell you more about them in a bit, folks. Uh, again, just a reminder, if you like what we're trying to do here on the Fallon Forum, which is fairly unique, uh, do support it. I mean, you can do that individually by going to our website, FallonForum.com. You can make a contribution. You can become one of our monthly supporters. That would be called a friend of the Fallon Forum. Remember, I love alliteration. I can't help myself. It comes with the turf. I don't know why. But beyond that, we've got businesses, about a dozen businesses that help make this show possible. Give them your support. They're all locally owned. They're all good people doing good work. Um, thank them by by patronizing them. And also, we've got nonprofit organizations that help make this show possible. And events like the Immigrant Entrepreneur Summit, like a, the A Million Dollar Marathon, like Repertory Theater of Iowa. So anyway, I um, uh, just got to remind you that uh, this show does not happen accidentally. It happens because a lot of good people get behind it. And we have good people come into the studio once in a while. And then we have people like Bradshaw. But we have good people like Matt Sinovic in the studio with me. <laughs> Matt is um, Matt is uh, with Progress Iowa. And uh, he has been tracking the American Legislative Exchange Council, who apparently have lost a few people lately. Yeah, the, the ALEC, or the American Legislative Exchange Council, has they've lost actually 49 different corporate sponsors over the last year and a half. And that's because they have just been continually exposed for being what they actually are, which is uh, a corporate front group. The New York Times called them stealth corporate lobbyists. Um, and for those who are not familiar with ALEC, they are, they've been around for 40 years now. They just had their 40th annual meeting. It took, them a long, it took us a long time to out them. Yeah, absolutely. They have done, they have actually done, uh, they've been unfortunately very successful um, in promoting their agenda. What they do is they they allow corporations to partner with the most conservative state legislators in the country to literally write laws together. So you have laws written for corporations. I mean, they are completely taking the general public out of the democratic process and letting corporations write these laws and then passing them off to legislators who then take them back mm. to the state houses and pass them off as their own. Yeah. It's 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 terrifying it's because It's a great system. Uh, it's a great if you're, if you're the corporations it, but it's but, a but, great but, system if you're the ones buying so the, why, the legislators. So why would be, yes. who are some of the big corporations that are backing out? Well, and these are not your, you know, lefty liberal corporations. These are Walmart has dropped out. Walmart. Um Pepsi, Coca-Cola, McDonald's, Wendy's, why would they, uh, John why, Deere. Why would they let a little pressure from the liberal media cause them to drop out of an organization that's probably doing their bidding? I, I'm sure, I'm sure they will continue to try and do their bidding. But they have. There was so much controversy and pressure applied to the corporate sponsors of Alec, uh, starting last year after the uh, the shooting of of uh, Trayvon mm -hmm. Martin in and. It, when it was because of the stand your ground gun yes. law, law, which again, Alec was, Alec was did, the one promoting that. Absolutely. It was an Alec model. It was one of the, one of Alec's model pieces of legislation. So one of the bills that was written for, uh, for these legislators to take across the country. And it's the bill actually started in Flo became law in Florida. Then Alec saw it yeah. and so, expanded it from there. Uh, sound bite here. The uh, Alec laws kill people. I mean, that's that's a, a bit harsh, but probably not an overstatement when you're referencing the standard. No, Alec right? is bad publicity, which is why you see all these companies, many of whom uh, agree 100 percent with these model bills um, dropping out because they don't want to be publicly associated. You know, you mentioned in your description stealth, and that was exactly it. Alec is meant to work behind the scenes, unknown. And the fact that we're even talking about them right now is a, a, a failure of their model. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, th there's literally a website you can go to right now, and if you are an ALEC member, and download every single one of these uh, model bills. And we were, we were talking uh, before this segment, uh, a couple of the, uh, I don't know, do we call them less than bright uh, state uh, legislators, or I just call them Sorensons, <laughs> um, have actually turned in 
literally the the model bill. They they printed it off the internet and said, "I want to pass this bill in our state house." So complete it, it, it with kind of, yeah, with Alec no letterhead changes. on it. Complete with Alec letterhead nice. and insert your own state here. <laughs> uh, printed Ouch. right on the bill. So I mean, since we've been turning um, nouns into verbs, uh, you, you you said uh, uh, Mondaled. Um, is is has Alec been acorned? Is this a, is this a, is this what happened to Acorn on the other side of the political spectrum? Are they going to go the way of Acorn and be forced to shut down completely? No. I mean, I, I'd like that to say that, but uh, hippie punching is almost a national pastime at this point. And frankly, uh, Alec doesn't need uh, our money. They certainly want it, and they they work in bills to get a hold of it one way need, or another. They need forty nine corporate sponsors' money that they no longer have. Uh, they. They're not getting the kind of support. My understanding, too, is they're not getting the same level of support from state legislatures that they used to get either. They're not. Hundreds of legislators have dropped out of That's going to be a revenue hit. Yeah. And and so while I don't think they'll ever completely go away, I, I think that they their role will hopefully be diminished. Now, unfortunately, what will happen is that some of that funding will likely go to other organizations yeah. that are doing very similar There's work. always the U.S. Like Chamber the, of Commerce. Yeah, the, uh, the John Birch Society. <laughs> I mean, there are, there are all these different organizations that promote similar legislation. ALEC is just the one that has found a way to do it where they can truly have corporate corporate lobbyists voting alongside no. legislators to decide what bills they want well, to pass. While I respect your opinion, and since we're on the subject of turning nouns into verbs, I'm going to McLaughlin both of you and say that you're wrong. I, I think Acorn is going to – Acorn. I think uh, Alec is going to get Acorn. They're going to, they're going to get so much continued pressure on this that they will be forced to go away. But you're probably right, Matt. They're going to find – the corporations that benefit from this front organization are going to find another place to begin to work. So how do you preempt that? How do you how do you keep the uh, how do you keep the eyes open now that they've been now that now that the public has been alerted to what's going on? How do you keep them open so that we find the next venue through which they operate? If you can answer that question honestly, there is millions of dollars in uh, you know. Um, oh goody, I can give Matty a raise. No, but in, in like five hundred one c three money. I mean, honestly, if you can find a way, and this is where where groups like yours, yeah. you know, come in. Uh, so handy in this uh, a YouTube world, and it's something that Republicans are not uh, ready for. You know, the last time we were talking about Chuck Grassley talking at the Family Leader Summit, and he knew that no one was paying attention to what Chuck Grassley was saying. I mean, Chuck Grassley is a lot of things, but he's not stupid. And he knew he could throw some red meat to the lions, and it wouldn't gain any traction. It wouldn't really right. leave that building. So he could say what he needed to to the people who were present, and Ted Cruz and um, Donald Trump uh, would get all the attention. Yeah, but, you know, but Branstead did not. Branstead and Governor and Lieutenant Governor Reynolds, while they threw some small pieces of maybe slightly overcooked red meat to the base, uh, didn't do what Chuck Grassley did. Followers of Christ. I mean, he's basically equating Republicans with Christians, and the rest of us are. Who knows where we are? But I know I know you're among the heathens. But, the world, but the point but. is, you nowadays where every event has a camera in it, every um, campaign rally has someone um, camcording it. You know, the the days are over where if you're a Sarah Palin, you can go to a a rally and tell people present that they are the real Americans, and have that just live with the people uh, at that rally. And those days are over, and Republicans are having a hard time. Uh, dealing with that, so it's it's well, gonna need Alec bringing the ever. attention. I mean, Alec is becoming increasingly important for the Republican Party. Absolutely, yeah. and, and and becoming increasingly or decreasingly influential. So there's a bit of a problem there. Yeah, and um, I would say that while Sarah Palin and Chuck Grassley, or Sarah Palin and and maybe others can get away with, or or will always have a camera on them, some of our state legislators. Most of our state legislators really don't have that kind of scrutiny. When you go to su like a sub uh, common subcommittee hearing at the at the Iowa State House, it's three members of the legislature voting on whatever bill that's going to move forward, and it's and the only other people in the room are the lobbyists for those bills. Mm -hmm. That's it, and that's where most of the determining and most of the governing actually happens is before the bill even gets to the to the floor of the house, right. and so. That's that's why groups like Alec need that need the extra scrutiny 
and and have to, and you have to be extremely vigilant about keeping an eye on what they're doing because they slip these bills in because they know that there's not a lot of scrutiny that goes on in those subcommittee and, and right. committee hearings except for the lobbyists that are there uh, battling back and forth on the legislation. There's not a lot of there's not a uh, a public eye on those on those proceedings. So they're able to just slide their agenda through through the state house. And that's why we need groups like Progress Iowa. And that's why you need places like the Fallon Forum where we can discuss these things candidly with the help of wizards like Bradshaw. Matt, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. Thanks, Ed. And when we come back, folks, we're going to talk about Bradshaw has an idea. He has an idea that somebody that we all know and love might actually be running for president. I want to hear about that. I don't think it's possible i think it's going to happen i think it's going to happen all right well i want to hear who this is and why you think so and then i want to decimate your arguments and i want your help folks so if you want to call and help me decimate bradshaw's ridiculous arguments 244-0077 is the number to call or toll free it's 855-244-0077 and if you like uh custom made burritos like i do you can get a fantastic one at fighting burrito at 13th and Locust in Des Moines or on Welch Avenue in Ames. Again, like six fifty dollars for an incredible make-it-your-own burrito. I also want to thank some of my other business supporters as well. Uh, Dan Kelly's Real Estate Business in Newton and also Diana's Wedding Cakes out of Newton. Those are two businesses that help make this show possible. Please do your part to support them. We'll be back in a minute with Bradshaw. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Drug and alcohol addiction slowly steals a person's identity, tearing away pieces of their life little by little until one day it seems like the hope of a happy future is gone and there's no chance of getting it back. Here at St. Gregory Retreat Centers, we can assure you that there is hope. Our unique approach to recovery begins with the understanding that the dysfunction and damage caused by addiction can be overcome, not just dealt with. Don't let another day go by. Call St. Gregory today. Well, good morning. This is the 7th of June in the Lord's year 2010, and this is day uno, one, of webcast1live.com. We will begin with Max World Live with my special guest, Tom Coates, in just a minute. There's Tom. Wait. Howdy. And uh, we will be live for the very first time on webcast one and say, gosh, remember that old day in history? Wonder where Walter Cronkite was. He must have been around hanging there too. But actually, it's the beginning of Webcast One Live. And thank you for listening. Thanks, Rob Spearman and everybody who's put together this project together. And uh, we're ready to go live now. So thanks for listening to MaxWorldLive.com. I can't tell you that it's going real well from time to time, but it is going. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Welcome back to The Conversation. That's Mary McAdams. And I want to thank uh, Gateway Market for sponsoring this segment of our program. I also want to thank uh, the uh, Ritual Cafe. Ritual Cafe is a 13th and Locust. A great place for a cup of tea, coffee, a wonderful selection of smoothies, and uh, vegetarian paninis. I know Bradshaw is a big fan of everything vegetarian. But, you know, even though you aren't, I'm kidding, you would still like Ritual Cafe. And you've been there, haven't you? Animals eat uh, vegetables, so it's kind of well, good enough for you. It's right? like second degree vegetarian. Yeah. So. <laughs> I also want to thank a Story County Veterinary Clinic. Speaking of animals, um, I think you've got a funny looking dog named Vader, I believe, right? Mm-hmm. 
You go puppy. Go puppy. Should well, have, I should have left. Yeah, the computer on so I could if listen. If you ever wanted, if you ever want to make sure your 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 dog is getting the top, uh, the optimal veterinary care, take him take him to uh, Kim Holding at Story County Veterinary Clinic. So there. How's Noted. That? What? Noted. Noted. All right. <laughs> I'm just. Proud. I always thought fighting burrito was a Steve King policy policy initiative. I, <laughs> that sounds it great. Be. I'm hungry now. So yeah, you have an idea that somebody we all know and love may run for president. Uh, tell us about this. I think Steve King is going to run for president. Do you think Steve King is going to run for president? Unless outside forces intervene. Outside uh, forces meaning people with large amounts of God? money who actually want to save the Republican Party. I think Steve King could set himself up for life. Why? Why, why do you with think a presidential run? Because one, look he at loses. the Republican field. Well, no, he doesn't actually run. Um, he runs in the same way that Newt Gingrich ran, aka you know held a book tour, and that was that was so Newt Gingrich. How much? How much is Gingrich making off of his book sales? Uh, I think Newt Gingrich is, is doing very well for himself these days. Um, and he can follow his true passion of wearing Google glasses and uh, and wearing and going to the zoo, maybe building a moon base someday. But I mean, just <laughs> game game this out with me, because as soon as I heard that Steve King was headed to South Carolina to meet with some heavy duty activists, why on earth would he do that? Other than the fact that if you can. And while, while Steve King could never win there statewide office of, here in Iowa. Yeah, but there could be plenty of reasons he might do that. You're, you're really jumping to conclusions here. While Steve King all right, could never win statewide office here in Iowa, and he's smart enough to do that. He was never going to run for Senate. He wasn't actually considering it, but he made a, yeah. a good no, chunk I, of money. I, I agree. He is smart enough to know uh, he will never win statewide doing office that. in Iowa. Think if you're Steve King, you could win the Iowa caucuses. And probably be, by the way, the the final uh, nail in the coffin. But that doesn't I mean an Iowa, after, an after, Iowa winning the Iowa caucuses matters nothing. Talk to Tom no, Harkin but, about that. No, I, and I understand it wasn't you know contested in in ninety two, but uh, the Iowa caucuses have enough problem with a being skippable. Ask John McCain. Yeah. Um, being a money grabbing affair. Ask Michelle Bachman, and possibly being crooked. Ask Ken Sorensen. Uh, Look, for the last eight years, people have been pushing very hard um, to take our first in the nation status away. And the Republican Party of Iowa has been doing everything in their power uh, to make that happen. They, they, uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, Steve King, almost joke candidacy, uh, winning the Iowa caucus might be the, the final nail and the final you know push to uh, so leave you, Iowa behind. And by the way, if we lose that first in the nation status... Uh, say goodbye to your ethanol subsidies. Well, yeah, and, uh, and, say goodbye well, to many of your uh, your farm uh, subsidies. See the programs. thing. The funny thing about this, uh, Democrat, the Democratic Party, for all its flaws, is being held captive by the Republican Party when it comes to the viability of the Iowa caucuses. Yep. I mean, if it if it dies, it's going to die because of the Republican yeah, Party. Yeah, Democrat Iowa. Democratic caucus goers tend to elect candidates that either go on to win or do pretty darn well. Republicans don't. The track record is not good, and it's getting worse. Um, yeah. But but Steve King could very easily win uh, the Iowa caucus. Sure, even that, that even means against the, you know the Santorums well, and even the the cargo cult candidacy of Ted Cruz. Look, we found our own Obama. And look, I mean, seriously, it's, it, it's so, almost so, the so, definition so, of a cargo so, cult. Steve there. King will not only ruin the Iowa caucuses if he does that. Um, he will assure I mean, he will assure that there's a lot of traffic that would be coming here that won't. And when with when you've got traffic, when you have got candidates coming here. Yeah. You have money coming here, and the chamber types are going to be livid with King for tanking the Iowa con the economy to the tune of probably hundreds of millions of dollars. But if he can win Iowa, well, we, and I if he could possibly win South Carolina, and just you, know, you, you can make one trip to New Hampshire and flip them the bird and leave. You don't need to worry about You're not going to play there anyway. Uh, but you win Iowa, you win South Carolina— and I mean, while in reality you're far from it, um, how many news cycles is that as you, the Republican front runner? Again, nobody's going to take him seriously as the front runner in Iowa. The only no, way, no, the it's, only it's, way it's, Iowa, it's 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 South Carolina that's the key. But that doesn't. I mean, yeah, okay. You win those two states, and you are absolutely a player. If for no other reason than the media loves horse race stories, policy is difficult to write about. So how how is horse races how is King are easy? Distinguish himself from well any of these people. Rick Santorum, Rick Santorum, and Steve King are not that different. 
Yeah, um, Steve King and Ted Rick Cruz Santorum the has that and uh, frankly the the stench of loserdom. How many times? You know, not just getting blown out in his home state of, of Pennsylvania. And that was kind of that was a big part of his presidential argument. Is I can turn Pennsylvania. No, you can't because you can't win there. Otherwise, you'd be an actual current. He should be a senator. Yeah. Um, well, he and he and it wasn't just a loss. He got. Blown away, as you said. What he, I mean, Steve points? King, twenty percentage points, wasn't it? I think it was somewhere between sixteen and twenty. Yeah, it was. It was I big. mean, it was a big, was big, big uh, blowout. But but Steve King, I mean, look, he spends a lot of time with Michelle Bachman, uh, but because does not suffer. She'd be very lonely. Does not suffer from her two most serious flaws, which is She's uh, short. not being that bright and being a little bit crazy, touched in the head. Um, well, King Steve is, King is not. I mean, look, I, I I've, I've told people this I, I, for you. Yes. Steve King is not crazy. He says crazy things. He says some yep. things that make you go, uh, what? But he does it for a reason. I, I can agree with you. I serve with the guy, and he's very bright. He's very personable. He's very shrewd. He's very shrewd. And, and uh <laughs> And, he he but, does good constituent work. This but is these why days, he and Grassley both win all the time. I mean, the, the, the root of the Republican Party isn't any issue or, or policy. Again, look at, I don't know, I mean, look at their resume. What policy these days, I mean, do Republicans uh, espouse, promote, uh, that is actually popular with the American people? It doesn't exist. It is absolutely 100% a game of hungry, hungry hippos. And it is get <laughs> Look, it is. It is get paid. And you see now so, even mediocre, you know, senators and congressmen getting jobs like heading up the uh, the Heritage Foundation. I mean, Steve King could be set for life because eventually when the Republican Party gets drug kicking and screaming into the 21st century, there's no room for guys like Steve King. Uh, he does it, a very good job. It will happen eventually, uh, probably not in the next election cycle. I mean, it's something that either the Republican Party will do a makeover, a serious one, or it will it will be replaced. You know, Steve King, again, can either sit, you know, in his going to be constantly rewritten Iowa district. And as long as it holds enough of Western Iowa, it would be safe for life. But he is going to be relegated to a, a backbencher who party elders, you know, will will threaten fire and brimstone if you put that man's face on TV. So does he want to be, you know, a, a backbencher in the new Republican Party and almost, a, you know, a, so, so you're, a you're, sign you're, of what not to you, be? Your contention is that he he runs, he does well, well, he wins Iowa, duh, and then he does well or wins South Carolina, doesn't have to do anything after that, nope. has a book, sells a bunch not of books. Not necessarily has a makes book, makes a bunch but of money, heads but th- continues to be a congressman. Heads a think tank. And takes a, a high-ranking position in the money machine. Doesn't need to be a congressman. When when I mean when the Republican Party adapts to reality, and the main uh, sticking point there may be you know losing Texas. And right now, by the way, um, and yes, I know it's ridiculously hilariously early, uh, but right now you run a Rick Santorum or a Chris Christie versus Hillary Clinton. Hillary may very well win Texas, and without Texas, there is no chance at all, under any circumstance, well, I uh, of a Republican <clears throat> president. Yeah. So now you're also predicting that the uh, Chicago Cubs are going to win the World Series. No, we are the horrible, next, and we're well, going then, to, within the next decade, right? I believe in the system. I believe in uh, in Theo and Jed, and I think we're going to find a way to make this whole thing work. We're stockpiling prospects. I don't like the Mike Alt trade, Mike. If you're tuning right. in right now. Uh, so best of luck. Hope you get those in, in, in vision problems so picked out. But I wish the Cubs hadn't traded for <clears> you. What I'm saying is, you're, you're, you, have, you have a real credibility issue here. Uh, <laughs> no, I think if, if Steve I King, see, I don't see Steve King. Pull, I really don't. see He's not running to be president. No, no, That's what so many people need to understand. Running. I don't see him running. And What's getting the downside? Uh, he, he again, he's gonna he's gonna have so much pressure to back off tanking the Iowa no. caucuses. I mean. That, that, that's, Why, that, who that's, cares? that's coming after a sacred cow that Republicans and Democrats alike will get behind against him on. Republicans don't. I mean, as long as it's short term, FYIGM thinking, 
you know, bleep you, I got mine. And that is exactly the thinking behind this. I think Steve King, if he sees a chance to win South Carolina, runs. And I think he makes a ton of money doing it and laughs all the way to the bank. We shall see. That's Bradshaw, folks. And uh, you've heard an interesting prediction and one that I will, uh, I don't agree with, but I'm intrigued by. Anyway, thank you for joining us. I'm intriguing? Well, no, just this once. Okay. Okay. Don't get used to it. (laughs) <laughs> hey, thanks to Gateway Marketing Cafe for sponsoring this segment of our show. Folks, check them out at 20th and Woodland for groceries and a fantastic ca- cafe for breakfast, lunch, and supper. I want to thank all the uh, nonprofits that help make this show possible as well. The Iowa You're chapter. welcome. <laughs> Wait, what do you Iowa mean by nonprofit? The Sierra Club, Iowa Physicians for Social Responsibility, and the Great March for Climate Action. Thanks to Maddie Kane, my producer, and to Webcast One Live for providing this studio. I'll be back tomorrow. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live.